The characterization of aquifer systems is an important task to improve the prediction of groundwater flow and to evaluate possible contamination hazards. To investigate different geophysical methods, a test site near Jülich in the west of Germany was set up. Here, borehole measurements revealed a complex aquifer structure. In general, such conventional investigation methods may have a limited spatial sampling or only provide an average picture of the subsurface. Thus, higher resolution techniques, such as seismics, are needed to properly characterize the subsurface in more detail. They allow analyzing data from artificial seismic sources to determine the elastic parameters of the subsurface. Here, you see an example of a seismic shot gather recorded at a test site. Clearly, the direct and refracted P waves are visible. At later times, the Rayleigh waves dominate. Those data were analyzed by full waveform inversion to investigate the properties of the subsurface and to reveal the complex structure of the aquifer system. Hello and welcome. In this video, you learn how full waveform inversion, FWI, can be applied on near surface structures. At the Jülich test site, Nicolas Satanasopoulos performed the seismic campaign and investigated the structure of the aquifer system. Nicolas will show you how previously known information from borehole and radar measurements are included in the waveform modeling. Finally, he will explain how the inversion results of these interdisciplinary data are interpreted. FWI is an inversion method that accounts for the full seismic waveform. It iteratively retrieves models of the subsurface by solving the full wave equation and allows for mapping structures on spatial scales down to approximately half a seismic wavelength. FWI can be applied on a wide frequency band of seismic waves, which are discretized on a model grid and inverted using high-performance computers. For the study near Jülich, a seismic acquisition profile was set up in the field. The details of this study will be explained to us by Nikolaus Atanasopoulos. Hi Nikolaus. Hello. How did you configure your seismic profile to characterize the aquifer and what did you know beforehand? We know from our colleagues in Jülich that at the test site the subsurface is divided into three layers. The base of the aquifer is formed by thin layers of clay and sand at approximately 12 meters depth. Above, there is a layer composed of sandy to gravelly grain size. Then, a well-sorted sand layer follows and at the top lies a poorly sorted gravel layer. The groundwater level varies between 1 and 3 meters depth, depending on the annual season. We acquired seismic data on a linear profile of 23 vertical component geophones with an equidistant spacing of 1 meter. As seismic sources, we used vertical hammer blows on a steel plate with an equidistant spacing of 4 meters. This acquisition setup resulted in a model space of approximately 35 meters in horizontal direction and 15 in depth. FWI allows to calculate the wave propagations through this model space and to invert for the elastic properties. How did you constrain the model? FWI is an iterative method which is based on an initial model. At first, seismic waves are propagated through this model. After some basic pre-processing of the raw data, we estimated initial models for the elastic parameters that we want to invert for. You can see the initial models here. The initial VP, VS and density raw models were calculated from the arrival times of the refracted waves, dispersion curve inversion and through an empirical relationship which relates P-wave velocity and density. Additionally, we also included some prior information from the borehole data. The values of the models increase over depth. At around 5 and 6 meters, two boundaries lead to a sharp increase of the respective values, followed by a smooth gradient. OK, these are the starting conditions. And how does FWI invert the waveform data to determine the subsurface properties? We perform the 2D elastic full waveform inversion in the time domain using finite differences. We use also the so-called multiscale approach. Initially, we inverted only for the low frequencies contained in the data. In following iterations during FWI, the frequency content is progressively increased to account for the full waveform information to increase the spatial model resolution. Finally, the frequency band of the recording data falls between 10 to 70 Hz. We invert this data using the total wave field in order to reconstruct the P and S wave velocities as well as the density for the characterization of the subsurface aquifer. 
In this simulation, you can see the wave field of the vertical component particle velocity, along with the corresponding sort gather. You can see that the refracted P waves have the highest velocities, but their amplitude is highly attenuated in larger offsets. Surface wave exhibits the greatest amplitudes, thus making the S wave velocity the most reliable parameter to resolve. From the various internal boundaries, we also observe multiple scattering and higher modes of the surface waves. I see. And how does the model you obtained by FWI look like? I will show you now the final results of the multi-parameter full waveform inversion compared to the initial models you saw before. You can see the resulting VP and VS velocities. The red asterisks represent the sort locations, while dust vertical lines mark the locations and depths of the boreholes. The models show different depth levels that correlate well with the geology that was studied previously. The inversion results show some low P and S wave velocity variations at the top layer down to approximately 4 meters. This can be identified as the uppermost layer of the aquifer consisting predominantly of gravel. Also, there is a region of low S wave velocity between 4 to 6 meters depth, which correlates good to the location of the sand layer and typically exhibits lower shear stress compared to gravel. Below 6 meters, both P and S wave velocities remain high, corresponding to higher compacted sediments. In deeper parts of the model, we have to consider that we cannot trust the velocities due to the illumination of our acquisition. So what is the resolution of your model and how good is the data fit? Full waveform inversion in this particular case has a resolution of around 0.5 to 1 meter. Conventional methods like ground penetrating radar go down to a decimeter scale. That is due to the difference in frequencies used. GPR is using much higher frequencies, which also, however, limits the penetration depth of the method. Here I show you three exemplary sort gathers with various offsets. Observed data is colored in black, synthetic data in red. The data fit is acceptable, as you can see, especially since we deal with real data and we know that our current physical system cannot perfectly explain the full recordings. Full waveform inversion solves a nil post problem, which means that multiple models could fit the data. So is it possible to further constrain the results? Very special for this test site are the numerous studies previously conducted. Could you incorporate those data? Yes, first of all, we used prior information from the borehole data to constrain the initial models for full waveform inversion. Then we chose the seismic line in such a way that it crosses several boreholes and the transects of previous measurements of ground penetrating radar, or GPR for short. Our colleagues in Jülich performed a full waveform inversion of this GPR data and determined a model of electrical permittivity, or epsilon. We qualitatively compare this model with the results of the seismic VS model since it is the most reliable. The various layers in the electrical permittivity model can be also identified in the VS model especially in the sand layer, where the electrical permittivity is quite high, we observe a decrease on the shear velocity on a similar scale of vertical resolution. This, in fact, is quite encouraging. Yes, in fact. What are your plans for the future? The next plan would be to take advantage from the high spatial resolution of GPR data and apply structural constraints to the seismic full waveform inversion. In other words, we will jointly invert these data sets but also minimizing structural differences. We will aim, and this will allow us to achieve a structural coherency between the resolved parameters. Nikolaus, thanks for these insights into your current work. Bye and see you later. Bye. In this video, Nikolaus Atanasopoulos introduced you to the application of full waveform inversion to near surface structures. At the Jülich test site, he and his colleagues performed seismic, radar, and borehole measurements to analyze the subsurface structure. By including those data in the FWI, they could better characterize the general architecture of the aquifer. They showed that a multidisciplinary application of FWI can increase the spatial resolution and enhance the knowledge of the subsurface.